Hello and welcome my dear friends. Welcome to another episode where I review beautiful fountain pens. Today I have for you a really really iconic and a beautiful beautiful fountain pen from Parker. I present to you the beautiful Parker Centennial. Well, uh, I will upload this review on the 22nd of August on my birthday and I was uh, searching for a really really interesting fountain pen to present on my birthday and this is it guys I acquired uh, this piece a few weeks ago but uh, I simply forgot about it I really wanted to do a good good research about it and I've uh, identified this particular model because let me tell you guys this model is produced in different uh, colors and um, designs all the way from 1987 so from 1987 till present this beautiful beautiful fountain pen is produced a little bit about uh, the history of uh, this great great product this is a product of uh, the subsidiary of Parker in uh, New Haven in the United Kingdom. It appeared in a quite, quite difficult period for the Parker company. In fact, strange New Haven. New Haven means a new hope for the Parker company because uh, the factory in uh, Janesville, USA, was uh, becoming up, uh, obsolete. It had uh, all the old machinery, and uh, the factory in Canada, in Toronto, closed its gates in December 1982. So New Haven became the new, let's say, uh, main uh, f factory of uh, Parker, in the late 1980s so uh, this particular model you see in front of uh, the camera it was launched in 1987 to commemorate parker's 100 years jubilee actually it was launched a year previously to the jubilee because they uh, celebrated 100 years from 1888 till 1988 and they based the design of this fountain pen on this wonderful wonderful design from the 1920s you can see the similarities and we will uh, do a slight comparison between the two models but this fountain pen that you see right here guys well this put parker on the map and established parker like the big brand we know today of course this is the famous duofold senior and this particular model is the parker streamline duofold senior in jade green produced between 1928 and 1933 a wonderful wonderful piece of course we will do some comparison in the designs guys because they are quite different in materials and uh, you will see that this little parker is uh, the top of technology in the late 1980s let me tell you about something about the design of this modern fountain pen of course then we will compare with the classic one from the 1920s so practically this was uh, the most modern fountain pen to its day so in 1987 it had a 10-day computer control manufacturing product and was made from over 130 components so think about this guys this small small pen made from over 130 components it was subjected to over 100 quality tests practically this large nib alone was 
bounced out from a single gold sheet and this alone had 21 production stages and practically Parker boosted uh, that um, this nib was the largest solid nib gold a solid gold nib in the industry this particular nib you see 18 carat here and 750 here this is a wonderful wonderful 18 carat nib the centennial was available in uh, 18 carat nibs and 14 carat nibs but uh, in 1989 they uh, ditched the 14 karat nib so it is it was available only with the beautiful beautiful 18 karat gold nib it's interesting it is in two colors like you see and the tip it is not iridium but is ruthenium Ruthenium is a very hard metal that belongs to the platinum family and uh, it uh, gives quite quite a nice resistance a uh, very very hard material at the top of the nib the ink feed and collector were computer designed and built not to leak at any normal plane altitude by controlling and regulating the ink by uh, sensitively adapting to atmosphere pressure and temperature changes and this wonderful wonderful body that you see here is actually not made out of celluloid but um, this body was made from solid rods of a very studly acrylic known as menthol meta Crylate. and um, those rings those trims were heavily plated 23 carats gold a wonderful wonderful piece guys and let me show you some details of it so this iconic fountain pen is the centennial version but there's also a thicker version which is called the called duofold international and uh, there are several clues on this particular model that identifies it to 1987 or 1988 the first years of production and i will start with this flat ending so you can see that the, at the ending of the cap we don't have uh, any logos and uh, the later models they had different different logos and a difference in length between this model and the duofold international this model is around 135 millimeters long or approximately 5.31 inches and the duofold international has only 5.1 inches like i promised you guys let me compare this beauty with the parker from late 1920s and early 1930s you can see that the duofold senior is a little bit longer but we have the same flat top design the clip is uh, different we can see this ball ending clip here and this arrow shaped clip here two gold bands and of course we have different different filling mechanisms so this is in fact a button filler so if we open this we can see the button filler mechanism and the other one the modern version from 1987 has has an ink converter now let me show you the beautiful beautiful nibs of uh, those two models because they are really really wonderful 
So look at them guys. One, the same arrow in the middle of them. Let me, yes, this is a better perspective. The modern one is a two-toned colored nib and the other one is one uh, gold color. We have engraved on one Parker USA and on the other one Parker 18 carats and 750. I believe that the original Parker nib from the 1930s was a 14 carat gold nib. The feeder is quite uh, different. This is a designed uh, plastic feeder and this is the famous Christmas tree feeder in Ebonite. Of course, one is made out of this beautiful celluloid green jade and this is made of acrylic. I will leave the vintage beautiful model aside because I want to show you the ink converter and uh, it's a little bit stained with uh, black ink and actually for the writing sample I will use the Parker Quick uh, blue ink so maybe it will be a darker uh, blue but we will definitely do the writing sample. Another interesting thing that distinguishes this from other Duofold uh, or uh, Duofold International or other Centennial models is uh, the fact that we have two rings here between the nib and the grip section. It's slightly concave the grip section and it is wonderful. So, interesting guys, we don't have uh, the famous date code, so no date code on this Parker, and uh, which makes me think that this is an early Centennial model from 1987 or maybe the early 1988. A wonderful, wonderful piece. I told you I bought this several weeks ago and I found it for a steal, guys. There was a nice, nice lady that sold me this particular fountain pen and I think I bought several fountain pens from her. I told her that this is an expensive product and uh, I can't afford it. Uh, I told her uh, it was uh, valued at minimum th uh, 300 euros. But I've made an offer to her and she generously accepted this offer. So 600 lace or 122.90 euros or 123.40 American dollars. So I think I got this beautiful, beautiful piece for a nice price. Of course, when I did that offer, I did not know that this is an early centennial version, uh, which uh, of course has a premium price in comparison with other versions. This um, has become uh, quite a rare, rare product, especially the first year models. A very, very elegant fountain pen, and I will leave its dimensions on the screen, guys. And after that, we will do the writing sample. Just for a comparison, I have here a uh, Mont Blanc Meisterstuck 146 from the 1980s, this from 1983, and this probably a model from 1987. So let's call them both from the 1980s. And it's interesting that the Centennial is uh, fatter than uh, this piston filled uh, fountain pen. Quite interesting. At the length, yes, the Meisterstuck is a little bit taller. And I'm curious to compare the two nibs of the fountain pens. And of course, I think that in this chapter, the Centennial is the king. Probably the statement that they made that this was the largest solid gold nib in the industry was true. 
but um, uh, remember guys that this is not the 149 in fact it's the 146 i don't unfortunately i don't have in my collection a mont blanc meister stuck 149 to compare the nibs but definitely it is larger than the nib on the 146 okay guys let me now prepare the fountain pen i'm curious to see how uh, this beautiful beautiful nib writes probably you saw that i did not clean this ink converter so it is the first time that i will write with this beautiful beautiful fountain pen i'm curious to see how the nib writes based on the tip of the nib i believe it writes like an, maybe an f or an m we will see about it guys so let me zoom out for a little bit let me put the pen here okay i will prepare the paper okay so i have here the paper right here guys maybe yes it will be good to change the angle of the camera and i will try to change it i hope that you will see better let me see okay like this i think yes it's okay right now and like i told you i will use the parker quick ink i tried to find out um, and i think that yes this is the parker quick ink it is i'm not so sure uh, yes it is a simple blue ink as you can see okay 57 milliliters yes i will shake it a little bit and okay okay i will bend a little bit this first you have to rotate this i'm sorry let me rotate it i think i have some let me try to see i believe yes we have some little problems with this ink flow with this ink converter in the sense that it is uh, stuck it is stuck guys and maybe i will find another parker ink converter because i know for sure that i have a ink converter lying around here so let me pause the video for a second well i'm really sorry guys but i could not find a parker ink converter but instead i found an empty ink cartridge and i will fill it using a medical syringe so be careful when you use a medical syringe at home to not hurt yourself i will gently pull the ink out and try to fill this cartridge as good as i can okay okay nice i will put it right here and now we have to wait let me put the ink aside here we have to wait for the ink to arrive in the nib section of course i will try to use it right now and look at this good good ink flow we did not have to apply pressure i will apply a little bit of pressure now but the ink flow was quite quite nice although i did not clean this fountain pen so let me see we can post this fountain pen but uh, you can see i'm not so sure uh, yes it posts but 
you can see we have a little gap here i won't use it post it it is a big big fountain pen i will leave the cap right over there and now let me see so we have maybe a little zoom will be in order yes yes for you to see how this wonderful wonderful piece writes we have a parker a little bit of ink flow problems but I'm sure it will be okay. You see, we don't have that beautiful blue Parker ink because it was fitted with the black ink. So here we have a Parker Sentinel. Okay, oh sorry, Parker Sentinel. Okay. It... Uh, was um, launched to celebrate the jubilee of the Parker Company from 1988, 1988, 1988, 1988. Let me zoom out a little bit, guys. This particular model was made in the United Kingdom, UK. And I think that this model in front of you is from 1987 or early 1988. It has a beautiful, beautiful 18 carat, 750 gold nib. Based on the way it writes, I think that this is an M for a medium, a medium nib. Let me test if we have some little flex to it no flex let me see if we have some line variation here no pressure and here pressure so no line variation no visible line variation it seems to me like a juicy juicy nib yes quite juicy this so this means we can do a nice signature with it now let me see guys if we can do uh, a reverse writing with it so reverse writing i can't say i can usually reverse write with it because it scratches so no reverse writing and now guys let me tell you about the fox so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so to be honest with you guys, I have, uh, I still have some problems with the ink flow. Maybe I should uh, fill this with its original ink converter in a, a way to get the ink moving in the feed and in the nib. I'm um, quite certain if I will leave it for several minutes the ink will uh, flow better but what can i say a lovely lovely nib uh it doesn't scratch in reverse writing it scratches a little bit but it is a smooth smooth nib and i think i like it a lot so on my birthday guys i think that this is a wonderful wonderful fountain pen to promote on my channel i want to wish you to have a wonderful wonderful day so have a nice day again the ink flow problem so have a nice day have a nice day guys wherever you are i hope you've enjoyed this little review of an iconic beautiful beautiful parker fountain pen well this product came in a difficult period for parker but uh, they uh, used uh, their knowledge and I think that it is uh, quite, quite 
a nice gesture to copy the old design from the 1930s. This is um, the way that most producers should uh, do to respect their history and to take lessons from the previous successes. Uh, this, this made Parker the big, big firm that it was in the 1980s. And it is still now. But um, a wonderful, wonderful piece. I love this acrylic, this red marble one. I think it's uh, simply wonderful. And um, uh, I still prefer the vintage one. Don't get me wrong, guys. But a nice effort from... Uh, Parker in 1987 in a difficult, difficult period, uh, financial period for them. So guys, this was my review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, have a wonderful day. Have a nice day wherever you are, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. I will see you in the next episode. Till then, bye-bye. And God bless you all, my friends.